Hello and welcome once again to Crazy Comics and Stories. It's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard. And Joe is on the podcast. Even though our schedules still don't match up. Butch is on the podcast because this is the world famous Black Friday podcast. That's right. This is the podcast where Joe, Butch, and I get in Joe's, uh, I don't know, car ve cop vehicle. Uh, it's not really, a, it's kind of an SUV. He calls it a cop car. It's not a car. It's more of a kind of a hybrid truck, whatever. I, I don't know. It's not mine. I don't have to deal with it. But we drive all around the Twin Cities, hitting comic shops along the way. On this episode, we hit Cedar Cliff Collectibles. Um, let's see, where do we go to next? We go to Mind's Eye. Then we go to uh, Uncle Hugo's and Uncle Edgar's bookstores, which have reopened. They burned down during the riots of 2020. They have reopened, and they are a fantastic science fiction and uh, mystery bookstore. Been around since 1970, I believe. Uh, one of the premier science fiction bookstores in the U.S. Well worth a visit if you're in the Twin Cities area. I was very happy when I went in and saw that they were in a much bigger space and they're already filling it up. Most of their used books there are donated. So when you buy used books, you're giving them even more profit than when you're buying the new books. And uh, then we go to Heroic Games. Yeah, Heroic Games. And we stop on our way to Dreamhaven. So this is the first half. The second half will be used as a fill-in probably later this month. When we stop to go to a place, you get this sound effect. So that you know that we have switched. And here we go. So I don't think I've ever seen your truck. No, that's a new addition. No, and you get to drive it. Well, as it should be, eh? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in charge. You don't get paid to make those kind of decisions. No, I'm not in. That's above my pay grade. You're not a supervisor. Get those donuts off there. We're going to go in the house to get something. We don't know what. I do. Oh, what? Sunglasses. Oh. So when he gets in, I'll ask him if he got his something else. What should it be? Wallet. Go without him. To get your wallet. Oh shit! Here you guys are. Yeah, that's the next one. <laughs> is there a hundred bucks next to you? No. <laughs> there will be. We're going to the scene of the crime. Well, the problem, the problem, the reason why I was probably more loose is, uh, you know, diabetes, sun, sun, bad for the eyes. If I could you be know, serious for a moment. I was actually, you know, if it was cloudy. <laughs> it's Lance Storm, ladies If and it was cloudy, I'd be like, eh, I'll suffer. But, you know, with sunlight, it's like, fuck, I'll get home and then my eyes will be all cloudy for a, a day. Yeah, we don't need that. Or what I call Cory vision. How are your eyes doing, anyways? Oh, oh this again. And I have glasses again. Oh no. Every step forward, every step back. Well, anyway. we got we got Cory in the back seat of the squad car where he belongs. Yeah. What I was saying before, I so rudely interrupted myself. Yourself, yes. I Don't blame that on us. I might as well. Um, I was going to suggest Mind's Eye which is close to Cedar Cliff. They both open at 11 and it's like 10 minutes from now. 10 minutes from here. Like I said, nerding out is more just a early morning stop. And mine's I 60% off uh, trade paperbacks and hardcovers. Oh, that was, yeah, that was well, the other then you want to get, too. yeah, yeah. then we're going to, we're going to get there now. We're going to regret not being there. After the uh, load of omnibuses I picked up, they were doing like 60% off and I was like picking up ones that I had passed on originally. Where was this? Uh, in stock trades online. Oh, I see. And part of what I was. Oh. Oh, man, what was that? <laughs> so here's the first time for the uh, recorder to. There play. we are. I was gonna get some Put back where we belong. I was gonna get some double sided tape. God, We're not happen. eating that, Joe. Oh, You're it's yummy. yummy. That's only slight in step up from the, your wax donuts. 
actually, I wasn't going to get them anymore because it occurred to me mm -hmm. this isn't really a road trip. This is more. This is in town. Yeah, this is geeking in town. Road trip. Well, would we'll be, be needing these then. Road trip would be like <laughs> if we. Uh, yeah. Road trip would be if. Like, there was that one store we visited when we went down to nerding out for the first time. Um, and the guy who owned it died. But his, oh. his nephew, I think it's called Book Review, his nephew just reopened the store, which is actually kind of neat. And he'd been open since, like, the 70s, right? Yep. Well, so. and um, Holt is having uh, all their dollar books oh. for 50 cents. Okay, folks, here. Here's a little eBay tip. Walk to the post office. Get some good exercise. Uh, what we've got here is Joe's parked 18 feet away from a... What are those called? Mailbox. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what are those called? Yeah. Sometimes that's the only exercise I get in a day. <laughs> Driving to walk to the mailbox. Yep, yep. And if I was really, you know... Feeling lazy, I would just drive the extra mile to the post office and stuff it into the uh, box itself instead of to this uh, trap here where yeah, it's a trap. Someone's gonna throw a banana shake in there that in was 15 a, minutes. Well, when I found out something, well, I think Dairy Queen's closed right now. Damn, <laughs> actually, it isn't. It shows how much you know. Well, you said, I think that was the first mistake, the second was challenging me on my Dairy Queen knowledge. Different I tried to think, but nothing happens. Oh. <laughs> well, that was the post office one time I had mailed. Remember, what are those uh, comics that you used to pick up on a bus? They were like religious, you're going to hell. Oh, the um, Spire. From Jack no, Chick. Jack oh. Chick, yeah. It's in the same vein as Spire Comics. But no, I, Spire not Comics when I get through with insane. It. The Jack yeah. Chick stuff was very conspiracy. Catholics are evil. Yeah, Jews which is funny because as a Catholic, I would read them and go, oh man, this is right. <laughs> you better repent or you're going to hell. I had found some and I obviously never sold them and I put them online to sell. So I sold that, a Spire comic, and Chris and I were heading up north, so I dropped them off on a Sunday. Two weeks later, I get the packages back and a note from the post office. Uh, somebody uh, went in and robbed the and you know robbed the postal box and mm -hmm, the mailbox. Yeah, and I thought it, how ironic that you stole religious comics. <laughs> well, they're <laughs> and gonna then get what's coming to them. Just recently, I, I heard on post offices warning that if you drop stuff off like Saturday, knowing no one's picking up Sunday, that's the prime day that these guys will knock over us uh, a freestanding post box is yes, we usually do. overnight on uh, Sunday or a holiday or things like that. Bunch of savages in this town. So <laughs> now I'll just take that extra run down to Como office and just stuff them in. Although they'll still probably rob them, but there it's actually, they actually have cameras and shit going. So so they can have a perfect high definition photo of them and say, nope, we oh, can't no, identify no, this guy. It is. Yep. No, 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 if it's a it surveillance it. cam, they always, <coughs> you know, you can't make out anything. Never mind the fact that we have satellites <laughs> that can tell, oh, it looks like uh, Putin stepped out of his house in Russia and smoked a cigarette. Know, and uh, we can tell by the satellite photo it's a Newport 100. He was eating hmm. crackers, Putin on the Ritz. Get out. Ooh. Okay. Ah! I regret out. nothing. Get out. Yeah. So how's everybody's turkey day? Turkey day. Filled with terrible movies. Yep. I was so happy. And all that pie. I only had one pie. I only watched one turkey. Get out. Movie. You're <laughs> obviously not Corey. <laughs> Aha, busted. How about you, Mr. Birch? No, he did not have a pe frozen pizza. No, I didn't very, have, didn't have a frozen pizza. I had a salad. Oh. And the kid was sick. Oh. She was home all day. And barely interacted with her because she's sick. And I didn't want to sicken up this trip. <laughs> I did. Are you down with the sickness? If you wanted to hang, but he never got back to me. Who's this? Mr. White. Oh, yes. Jack White? Yes. Yep. Oh. I Never wanted Jet got White back. and Jet Black. I wanted them both in the car. Jet White. 
Oh, Corey, this is all you. Butch and I talked like two days ago, so <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> we got nothing to say. That's it. Good night, everybody. Good night. How was your Black Friday? How was it? Well, we had breakfast, so we're good to go for a while. I was eating breakfast when you guys came in. No. Oh. Which is why I paused at the gas station, because I thought of running in and grabbing something, but then I'm like, well, I ate already. I'm telling you. you I thought bring, you were just going to go to a nice neighborhood. You don't bring Butch to a place where it's all you can eat meatloaf. You're lucky you got him out there in one piece. <laughs> Where the no, meatloaf? it was uh, IHOP, so it was uh, pancakes. Where's the meatloaf? And they're smart. They're not having an all-you-can-eat pancake thing right now. I think they, when they saw you two walking in, they got ah, just like time clock. They were here last year. Yep. Couldn't get rid of them. Even though it was the middle of COVID, they insisted on being fed a pancake. You gonna eat anything this time? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just calculating. Try to avoid around Mall of America. Because <coughs> traffic will be backed up. Just like a lot of people are if they ate too much, too, too many uh, slices of that cheese from the... Mm, they all rotten potatoes. From the jerky and cheese. Yeah, from the cheese and crackers board. <laughs> wait, wait, what? And that used to be one of the beast's uh, curses. Stars and garters, cheese yeah. and crackers. Oh my, stars I don't know about stars and garters, I remember. I think you're hallucinating that. Just no, it was a Patsy all... Walker who was cheese yes. and crackers. Yes, she was cheese and crackers. Well, speaking of the beast, I have a uh, my Marvel novel from 1980 or 81, uh, The Avengers, The Man Who Stole Tomorrow, sitting out at, at home. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah, I see the wife has decided to use it as a coaster. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. She's a wonderful person. There you are. Don't go crazy. Are you a cocksucker, motherfucker? Gotta sit there and tailgate my ass as if it's me. Fuck you, fuck you and the horse you rode in on. This message has been brought to you by Joe Ryder. Safe driving with crazy Joe Ryder. Lately I've been in the mood to reread those Marvel novels. Yeah, me too. That's why it's out and I was reading it. Why they don't have those like in an omnibus form or something? I wish they did. Omnibook. Omnibook. Oh, there you go. You hear that, Marvel? Another thousand dollar idea. Yep. Get to printing. Oh, they're calling. Hello? 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 Another well, thousand the dollar one, idea. The Spider-Man one was written by Len Wein and Marv Wolfman, uh, and it tied in with Spider-Man. Yeah, I remember Ooh, that. That's comment. slick. And they actually then, referred um, to it. The book of short stories, when Shooter got behind on um, Avengers. Avengers, he adapted uh, Michelinie's short story. Hmm. Yeah, that was a trip. When that happened, I thought, hey, this is in that book. Gee. That was one of the, was it the Doctor Strange novel? Yeah. Had a deal where he ends up, he's in a hallway, and every time you open a door, it's in a different realm or different world. Well, that's and just called the I hallway. I thought that was a brilliant idea. I used, I used to co opt that when I played uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, right. Nobody yeah, perfect, read yeah. comic books except me. That wasn't a comic book, though. And I know. Yeah, it was it even was better. Because they'll never read based a book on a comic. based on a comic book. I was like, because you know, otherwise, you always run into you know the rule guys who are like, well, that's not how these guys behave. Well, they do in my world, so shut up. Yeah, they do. He's a friendly giant. I smite him with my axe. What? <laughs> there goes the whole. <laughs> there goes the whole realm. He was a green giant. Beyond the realm. He drops a corn cob on you. He's Dumbo. So my favorite lifetime possession is a coaster at the house. That's oh, it. Yeah, it's number one. Yelling, Don't put glass on that! What? What? But it's a coaster. Shut up! No, this CD is a coaster. That's oh, a book. that explains it. Shiny side up. <laughs> Here, here's a Nickelback CD you can use as a coaster. They're, they're not <laughs> even a band yet, but go ahead. What? I don't have a nickel. Can uh, I give you a dime? Was that called? No! What about, the, only. what about the man who stole tomorrow? Tomorrow! I read that you yesterday. Was, you. I think the only other Marvel novel that tied in with the comics was Peter David's. When he wrote a Hulk novel. Peter David and the Hulk. I haven't read it yet. 
Yeah, don't. Spoilers. Spoilers! How to tie in. What novel? What novel? Um, How many did he do? I don't remember the name of it, but it's what the only Hulk novel. He's Savage Hulk. Howl, Howl and Mad. What, Savage Beast? Is that the name of it? I think so. I think it's Howl and Mad. On one of our trips last geeking, I picked up. We hit a half price and they had it. How was it? <coughs> oh, it's beautiful. I don't oh, want to touch it because well, you know, once you've read it, you spoil it. Well, I mean, I need a new coaster at the house. I know. <laughs> Get the hardcover then. Who's this Flash 123? I'm never going to reread it anyways. So oh. Joe keeps sending me pictures of the lunch bunch. And you're there. So I know. Oh, the lunch bunch. I'm I shouldn't dressed say you're like there. Uh, John Cena. I should say your chair. Every every time there's another guy there, by a couple of weeks yeah. there'll be a thousand people. If you notice, the rest of the restaurant was empty. Oh, God, they're here. Get out. Run away. Oops. I'm going to get the Abba Da special. <laughs> ah, gluten free. Sausage, eggs, and cheese. No cheese. No, no gluten. Save your gluten. And burp the pizza. Uh, Abada. Abba, Abada, Abada. Abada. What are you looking for today, Joe? Uh, Shaner family. Shaner. <laughs> Forget well, it. You know, I was going to tell you all about all the bad people in my neighborhood, but now I'm afraid. So, good some good people, people in your neighborhood. They're in, in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. neighborhood. Well, Who are the people in your neighborhood? And now people, and, and people wonder why. What do you do on Thanksgiving? Yeah, you can't well, make I go jokes. to the candy shop, and then I sit home and watch well, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Apparently. Open. What about family? Yeah, yeah family. Family. Them, but uh, anybody remember that group? What? Them. Them. What should remember? They're from the whole. Oh, I thought that was. Oh, the, that uh, them. Yeah. So the weird no, you made the Van Morrison band. That hired Eric the Red to go after the X Men. Oh, it was. Oh, it was the Hellfire Club all along. Them and the Hulk. All right, what vintage? Um. Well, Bill Manlow ended it. They never did unmask them. Okay, yeah. Been a while. I only read those once on the way through off the shelf. Oh. Oh. See, that's if I was writing something Marvel Comics, I would always, always look for that stuff. Yeah, that yeah, like never absolutely. got. Absolutely. That kind of dropped. There was one. I don't know if you were here. We were talking about it. Uh, a, sec a super group. Guy We're going to clear it up in the My Wondar movie. Put together. <laughs> there was a, a Spider Man comic where a young girl was in trouble. And Spider Man saves her by. Or I think the dad. Somebody saves her. It's Spider Man on a football field holding oh, the yeah. baby. And again, you know, just a one off story. It's a good story. But I'm like, well, she grew up hearing about how Spider Man saved her, so she kind of becomes. A superhero. Uh, there's a Marvel comic called Little Petey. I would, I guess, their version of Dennis the Menace without uh, yeah. charm. Yeah. I'm Look not sure. Him back. I would take okay that he would be one of the heroes, but kind of a snarky guy, you know. But just find people like that, that onesie twosies, and then maybe take someone they're not using, like Boom Boom or who's the uh, there was somebody in Spider-Man that was like super powerful and then they depowered him. It was a kid, it's supposed to be the next big thing. Yeah. Oh no, that was in the Fantastic Four. And he was uh, in Spider-Man. I know the one you're talking he was in about. Spider -Man too. Oh. I but thought he meant in Fantastic Four 201, the, the little mutant boy, who they were gonna put in the new mutants, but Chris Claremont said, eh, ah, no. I like there's the little mutant there's, boy. There's another hero, you know. This one that Joe's talking about, they did a uh, uh, homage cover of the uh, Superman vs. Spider-Man cover. I can't think of his name. Yeah, I can't think of his name either. But just, you know, take these, because what that does is it drives people nuts, because now they're like, oh my god, i got to go find the first appearance. That's why you would do it. And that's how you know you got something, because 
What, did, what was the name of the Hispanic superhero they're going to have in the next Spider-Man movies? All of a sudden, his two appearances went up crazy in price. He, and it was back in Peter David's friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Just, you know, one-off villain. Oh, but yeah. he's going to be in the Marvel Universe. Hell, oh. Aquila. The ego. Well, the prices on the Eternals have dropped, so you pick those up now. Yeah. It doesn't always work. Nope. How about mint condition number one still pretty serious? Well, it went from a thousand to three hundred and sixty. Yeah. Considering it was like ten bucks before. Maybe twenty. But hey, I got an omnibus out of it. Omnibus. Why? They, I had they made one, one of the for originals. You? They actually made yeah, two. they made one just for me. Yeah. I'm just off a glory. Out of it. I had the first one that was just the Kirby run, and then I sold it. And then, because uh, they came out with another one that included, I think, the 12 issue miniseries. And Basically, all their appearances, because it's yeah. got the What If stories and um, their Thor appearances and stuff. Once I got through my head, the Omnibus does. I don't mind if my Omnibuses get dinged. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna read them all. What the hell? Yeah. Especially the Marvel ones, because Marvel will just, Marvel will just reprint them in great without dings. Except the uh, the dingless wizard. I did like they did that for Squadron Supreme too. It's okay. We had an omnibus that was just the 12 issue miniseries. Nah, let's do all of it. Yeah. Wee. Wee. Wee wee. Wee wee. I get the right away. Enough of you. Plus, being a cop car, you can hit me. It's not going to hurt. <laughs> they apparently designed these. Now we there. are starting off with Cedar Cliff. Yeah, yeah. And I hope he's open at 11. That's a good set. Yep, there we go. I take the big one. Yeah, take that weird spot. I like it, the weird spot. Yeah, nice day out. It looks 48 degrees outside. Oof. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah I'm even behaving myself because, you know, usually I'll start finding things. Yeah, I can flip that. I can flip that. Flip. All right, so we're leaving. Joe spent big money is this, today. Is this baby on? Yes. All right, so we're leaving Mind's Eye. Eric was there, the owner. Eric Childs, I think. Yes. And always a great place. Uh, he told us he's looking in the spring, moving to a bigger place uh, nearby where he is now. Uh, just a fun time. I mean, the guy talks comics. He's it's, he's uh, fun to talk with. I was uh, to quote uh, Pakruba, I was a bad boy. <laughs> he huh? had for sixty five percent off the Crisis box set, which is all the Crisis crossovers. Crisis itself, you know, they had the uh, like five books. Okay, Crisis crossover in the multiverse. All five of those, and which I've been trying to find for years. So I picked that up. I picked up Heroes. Was it no Heroes Re Reborn? When the Image guys did some of it, I've been trying to find the individual issues, and it's like pulling teeth. You know, you find one or two in a dollar bin, and then ah, oh, here's a complete set for five hundred bucks. Yeah, whatever, dude. Do a couple various ones. I did talk about. There's a place I believe it's Twin Cities Geek, or where they are taking items to be signed by various people. Like the latest one is for Samuel L. Jackson. Turn left on Minnesota 13 South. Anything, the right lane to exit anything right you to care to bring. W North toward Minneapolis. How rude. Um, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, it starts at like 500 bucks. You know, because I would send in like one of their Avenger comics where they have him as Nick Fury on it. And they don't slab it like uh, use the right lane CGC to exit right to I-35 W North toward Minneapolis. But I, you know, I had to think for oh, 500 bucks, man. Could be worth it. Do you remember uh, Tori Quella? Oh, 
he used to shop at my store. He does Twin City Comics no, online. And what he does is he brings comic books to conventions and has the actors sign them. He's got like Al Pacino signing the Scarface comic. He's got all the star, most of the Star Wars people. Yeah. Um, and then he has them slabbed and he sells it on his website. And so there's some market for signed comics oh, yeah, because somebody wrote their name on it? Well, for actors, there's always somebody looking for actor signatures. And that seems like a good twist to have them sign. I a told him it's comic, brilliant. I, guess. I wish yeah. I'd have, I wish I'd have <laughs> thought about it. You know, like when we were trying to make it. We were trying to make a card game for Magic the Gathering, and we, or for a wrestling card game back at the shop, and we, we couldn't quite figure out the dynamics. And then Magic comes along, and they have the, well, you know, rare, uncommon, common cards. You know, like Jobber would be common, you know, get a guy like Hulk Hogan, he'd be a rare card. Uh, well, your moves. Yeah, the, the moves would be the card. Be rare. Finishes could be rare. You have outside interference, but anyway, tops you could have like fifty of them, and finally Chris Jericho's chest starts bleeding. <laughs> you're you're bleeding. The crowd goes wild. Oh my God, he's busted open. The tires on this truck. Yeah, I know. So what'd you get, Butch? I got. Hell is a squared circle one shot. Is that correct, Corey? Yes, I saw that. That is correct. All right, I got that. Recommended by Corey, and I'm looking forward to reading that. I got a Fantastic Four Jack Kirby Artists Edition. I think people know what those are. I don't know what. Yeah. The, are there different Fantastic Four Jack Kirby Artist Editions? There, I would imagine there were a dozen well, of them. Well, this is what they more. call the Artisan Edition, which is a smaller, cheaper version. Yes, it's not the full-size. Uh, Our full-size one is yep. printed at the same size yep, as the original art. Got it, got it, yeah. This is a trade paperback of it. Right. And it's you know, photographed directly from the original art. So you get all the color corrections, all the Kirby's notes around. Yep, white out. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, okay, so Artist Edition is full size. That makes sense. I need to get my hand on some of those. Uh, my hand on some of those. I got the anchor, uh, the two anchor, the two the anchor trade paperbacks, which is a Phil Hester book from about 10 years back that I've always wanted to read and knew it was out and never saw it. And one time Joe and I stumbled upon the trade and I didn't buy it. So I got those. Keeping in mind, these are all at terrific, like 60% off yeah, you're prices. Yeah, a killer sale. Uh, I got some kind of a reprint of Marvel Fun and Games activity oh, comic yeah. book from uh, from the 70s. Hey, you got your bathroom activities ready. That's what, yeah. That's why I got it <laughs> for today. And, reprints uh, the entire series. Does it reprint the entire yeah. series? Yep. Yeah, I couldn't Which tell. Which is funny because... I, I was telling Butch when he found this that I've seen number ones that aren't all marked up going for like 30 bucks, if not more. So, again, even John Nunziata years ago was like, yeah, buy, buy a couple of these, but don't mark them up. Trust right. me, years from now. And he's right. For many years. Yeah. About a dollar a year. I imagine the later <clears throat> issues as it was petering out would be uh, probably more expensive even because... Now I can go home and go right to my shelf and grab the my copies off in, in the little uh, brown comic bag that they're in, but and start uh, with, marking them up with nothing written in them. Yeah, because I didn't write in them; I just imagined it. And then I picked up the second Maniac of New York trade paperback, which is called "The Bronx Are Burning," I think. And uh, got to find myself the first one. That's pretty good. That, the, 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 uh, usually I just pick up stuff that's on the shelf. I don't really go for what I'm looking for, but I was looking for the Maniac in New York and the Anchor. So, cool. got some stuff I was actually looking for. Yay! How about you, Mr. Strode? Mr. Um, Strode. definitely three Marvel Voices trade paperbacks, which are uh, stored, like, all African American creators, all Asian creators, all Native American creators. I picked up like the regular comic, but these are trade paperbacks that have more stories and more voices. Also got One Star Squadron, which I've read on the DC Infinite, 
and liked it so much, it's like, oh, I can get the trade, and it's 60% off? One Star Squadron, What? A, what is it? I it's, left stuff on the shelf, too, definitely. So. Oh, yeah. uh, One Star Squadron is a bunch of the, like, the B-heroes in the DC Universe get hired to be heroes for hire, basically. It's by Mark Russell, who, I love his writing, love his writing. There was a essential in the wild, and whenever I can find an essential in the wild, I'm going to buy it. And this is at sixty percent off. Wolverine essential number six. Number yeah. six. And then two big hardcovers. One is a sequel to the old kitchen sink miniseries Kings in Disguise, which was set in the '30s about a young boy whose father loses his job and they become hobos. Huh. This is a sequel where young boy has joined a circus. Yeah, that's the life. And then the other one is an IDW book that I almost bought from CheapGraphicNovels.com because they had it for 40% off. Glad I waited. Mm -hmm. The Art of Pulp magazines. It's just a lot of stories and art about the people who painted covers for pulp magazines. Oh, man. And, yeah, I love that sort of stuff. So, really happy to get that one at uh, 60% off. And it, it's such a fun little store. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no, if we, if we lived in the neighborhood, we'd spend time there. Absolutely. We, we and, ran into Pete from the con. Yes. Which was fun. He brought his kid back. Which it was great to see Pete again. Yeah. And, and Kent. Good to see those guys. And we saw a comic that uh, I was kind of drooling over. Oh, oh, yeah. I took a picture of it. Uh, Amazing uh, Fantasy number one. 1700 bucks. Oh, man. Yeah, it's so... First Crazy appearance of Doctor Droom. Yeah, to just see it versus you know versus like uh, watch the road. book or something. I am, but the one it's watching back. And those Atlas covers with the you know the word balloons on the cover are always you know super thick. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't look like anything else. You have that Kirby art and then that super thick word balloon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's a great cover, too. The guys are out looking, and there's a monster coming up behind them. It's just a masterpiece. This is the kind of thing I love. And I won the little uh, guessing game. Oh, I did. Of when it came out. Yeah. Cool. Where am I supposed to exit? Uh, you're headed toward 94, it says. Just, just keep yeah. driving. Okay. Just keep driving. 35W North, driving. 94 East. East. Okay. We are 8.2 miles away. I say that because I also know Wax Museum's got a sale going on. Or to go right well, past we can that. Always, we can always go there later, but Uncle Hugo's closes at 4. Yeah, yeah, that's why I figured go there next. I think Dreamhaven stays open later, and I think Heroic Games does as well. And then in the last two I thought of at that point, because I believe... I believe the, the triangle we were talking about, the Wizard Wax, Nostalgia Zone, and Time Bomb, I think they closed by 6. And we want to end up at Source because hopefully we'll run into Kelly and then we'll go for pizza. Pizza, 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 pizza. Yay. Yay. Yeah, I have a, a want list of things I'm looking for, but it's not... I'm having more fun just looking for things I didn't expect. And sometimes, even like at Mind's Eye, he had a deal going on this omnibus, is 65% off. Well, do I want to buy the question? I spent years trying to get the comic run together, and now I have it, and I haven't read it yet. But, you know, it's like, oh, do I want to buy that? And then I can sell off the comic run, or just, you know, forget it. I've got the comic run, I can read that. He's one of the choices, choice shops choices. that stocks a lot of omnibuses, too. Yeah. And that's on top of the uh, omnibuses I got from Minstock Trades. I think if I recall, uh, the original X-Men, the first, second one, Defenders, the McFarlane, Spider-Man. That McFarlane Spider-Man was dirt cheap. Yeah. 
thirty bucks. An omnibus? Yeah. yeah. No. That is cheap. And again, I think I have his whole run. <clears throat> so just yeah, when it, and I had to back off because then I'm thinking, oh, do I want to do the Avengers? Do I want to do this? A lot of this I have in essentials. I didn't even look at Eric's epic collections because. I bought the crisis box. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you uh, want to make a deal for something on eBay, now is the time to do it. <laughs> it's funny. Kick a man when he's down. I tell you, I, I had this. Every so often, Dynamite does these things. They're limited editions, um, which they're not. I don't understand how a retailer gets them, but some every so often I find them on the on the. Um, over at the source or sometimes at Eric's. They might be one per store, they might be you got one because we like you, but they generally start at about 50 bucks and they go higher. Well, this is one I picked up, I don't know where I picked up, I paid cover price. And I looked for it, there's none on eBay. And I'm like, well, I know they retail at 50, I'll put 75 and make an offer. And somebody sent me an offer for 40 bucks. And now generally I'm like, yeah, you know, like I said, it's worth 50 but, you know, I generally don't like people lowballing me, but as I just bought something for 200 bucks, I didn't expect, as soon as I stopped this car, oh, that's a good place to stop, middle of 94. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to accept the offer. Middle of the freeway, baby. Call me crazy. <laughs> we do. We do. So, anyways... And this one, this will air probably, probably. Keep probably. the right two lanes to keep right two, I-35 W North. Who asked ya? Yeah. This will probably air after I go home and face the music. What'd you buy for 200 bucks at uh, Mind's Eye? But, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's still good. It's still good. The, uh, the other one I paid cash for, so she didn't know about. Ah, uh, you're all in the clear. But, but, but I got, I got, I paid cash. Got the cash. He once gave away a Amazing Fantasy 15 for hundreds of dollars. But I got the cash. <laughs> but I got cash. It was restored! Oh, man. No! So we are now heading towards the new Uncle Hugo's. Keep right to I-35 W North. Okay. Whatever you say, lady. Because uh, we, we have yet to visit it. Opened in July. It was one that In three that quarters of a mile. Take exit 16B, I-94 East, St. Paul. Pushy. St. Paul. Comment. It was, the original store was burned down during the riots a couple years ago. So, this should be fun. They're having a sale too. They never do really big sales. This one like 10% off. They're having a sale. But... For us. Used books, baby. Used books. I used to love going to the old one because it was just going through their uh, science fiction section. I'm never big on mystery. In 1,000 feet. Exit right. Did they say exit right? Yes. Exit. You know what that means. Oh, what do I want? <clears throat> I want exit right to get up Exit there. right to exit 16B, I-94 East. We are! Boy, look at the she attitude I asked. I just asked a question. I'm told you already. Go to 16. <laughs> then we're going to take uh, exit 235A to Riverside Avenue. Okay, so I've got to cross over. So how did, how did Ankyo uh, Hugo's restock? People have People been donating books to him. Yeah. I wondered about that. Use the right lane to take exit 235A, 25th Avenue, Riverside Avenue. Don't maybe call a cop. If you come down to Riverside. Oh no, I don't have an oh shit bar by my door. Uh, never give Cray a cop car. And, uh, yeah, never give Cray a cop car. In 1,000 feet, exit right. Tell me how to do it. Shit. Hang on to your mogies. Exit right to exit 235A, 25th Avenue, we Riverside are. Avenue. In 900 feet, use the right lane. Might want to run right on Joe's dash cam account. video of that one. <laughs> you know what? I got a dash cam thing. I just haven't set it up yet. Ooh. Is it a cop or isn't right a cop? Corey can run dash cam video with the uh, 
uh, whatever you call this audio. I don't see a no turn on red sign, so I will turn on red. See if I can sneak around. I do believe I can. You are really good at turning me on. Ah, okay. Should ignore that. In 1.2 miles, <laughs> turn left on East 31st Street. <clears throat> Or did he say, <laughs> pretend he didn't say that? Something like that. <laughs> nah, do what the boy says. <laughs> I've been doing, 50 degree, spending a 50 bit degree. of money on uh, Simpsons Tapped Out, because they have the Black Friday sale where they give you tokens to go after, like buildings and characters from the past. So it's a game? Yeah, and then you can take the, the, the premium currency is donuts, <laughs> and you use that <laughs> to purchase other things. So I'll, I'll end up buying like seven or eight different buildings with characters. I thought so. Spend a little time, play somewhere I like them, and then I got all these tasks running in the background. <laughs> Had to turn off the thing. Oh, this character's finished. This character's finished. Shut up, you. I got Teenage Smithers. Knows how to in 300 feet. Turn right, then turn right. Turn right on 27th Avenue South. Then turn Thank right. You. You're then much, turn right on Pot Street. You're much more conducive than this. Turn right, turn right! Turn on Pot Street? Dude. Yeah, but I don't know what the context right of that is. Turn right on Pot Street. Oh. Then turn left on Pot South Street. 26th Avenue. What? We're going a different way, baby. We're, they're like turning us around. No, they want to get us over to 28th Street. Okay, so that's behind us. Now it's that way. It's where? Oh, we're Approaching fine now. a railroad crossing. Joe will be happy. Joe's always happy with railroads. Yeah, but we're not at a railroad crossing. Choo -choo. We're nowhere near a railroad crossing. But we're approaching a railroad crossing. 24th Street. I was waiting for the doo 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 doo. Hey, stupid. Better check your geographic information system, stupid. No, we're doing ways. They're nice. They just go, oh, you, you, lady. you chose a different way? Here. <gasps> hey, lady. Lady. So they had uh, Dr. Hibbert's dad as a playable character, and he freaks out Good because luck. Dr. Hibbert's like, Dad, you're acting like Fred Sanford, calling everybody a dummy. Oh, man. And he starts freaking out. Oh, my God. Uh, everybody's a character of somebody else. A character of somebody else. <laughs> and who comes to arrest them? Right on East 26th Street. Uh, no, I'm not. Well, Chief Wiggum. Ah, you're Edward G. Robinson. Oh. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? And, talking then he, about? and then he, he's talking to Lou. He said, wait. In 300 feet, turn left on South 26th Avenue. Turn left? Yes. Um, turn left on South 26th Avenue. Free. What's free geek? He starts yelling at... Uh, at uh, Lou because ah you're a character of Sylvester Stallone you know? <laughs> which I did <coughs> hey chief <laughs> <laughs> it's just hilarious because he's freaking out and then he runs into Frank <laughs> Professor Frank there you go memory lanes I've been to a few concerts there free geek yeah what's that it's a know, bowling alley this way. Nope. free geek I don't know what nope. that is the Mirage Q computers the Toy Posse got their show coming up is uh, over. Uh, they, they're over Rated? Half a area. mile. Turn left on East 31st Street. Oh, I'm on the, I'm on the uh, railroad crossing. Oh, I kind of like that. I told I bought, you there was a railroad crossing. I bought too many comics. I like trains. What am I looking for? A target here. East 31st Street. Regret. You'll be and, turning uh, left. And it's point three miles. <clears throat> And then Hero Games right down there, and Dreamhaven's not too far from us either. So, you all right. You don't so know. I'm looking for 31st. It'll tell you. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. Like, right, hey, dummy, you just passed. In 1,000 feet. Big dummy. Turn left. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve feet. At Lake Street. No, at 31st Street, which is after Lake Street. I don't like your thing. He wants to turn on Lake Street. Yeah. 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 But I told you about the train tracks. Yeah, miles before we get there. 
No, it was 0.3 miles before we got there. Miles How miles do I know we haven't we gone 1,000 feet and you just waited till 1,000 feet to tell us to go another 1,000 feet? Because we have 725 feet to go. That's a lot of feet. What do you want for nothing? A rubber biscuit? Hey, that'd be a good comic, sir. Print out police station? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. The stoplight is yelling at us. It's practicing in, its in right to a alphabet. militant voice. Four, three, two, run like hell! Red means stop, green means go, yellow means go very fast. Butch is going to read comics too. He's going to read comic books. Hell is a squared circle. What was the wrestling comic you guys were telling me about uh, to get at the. When we were at the Hot Comics gas station at Free Comic Book Day a while back. Some wrestling trade paper back in there that I... I honestly don't uh, remember. Could have been yep. Image. Both pointed could it out Could have been Image them. Ringside. Could have been. Oh, um... Left on East Moon 31st Palace Street. Books. What's that? Now, what is that? Headlocked. Headlocked. Yeah, it was headlocked. Okay. Okay. I found the leaf cleaners. Destination is on your left. There it is. Hey, Uncle Hugo's books. See, it wasn't all continued. You got a hankering for a hunk of cheese? Oh, uh, hang a stinker, stanker, stunkin. Or whatever he said. All right. Is it on? Yes. All right. We're leaving Cedar Cliff. Well, he spent quite a bit of time there. Mm -hmm. I went through his dollar bins. Don't ask me what I bought. Because I just... Well, huge, look. huge Black Friday oh. stop over at Yeah, and he Cedar doesn't Clifford. do a sale because he's huh? usually doing sales. All yeah, yeah, everything's he's on. He's low priced anyway, so... Yep. I did, as we were waiting, I found a Yang number one from Carlton. Waiting for what? In pretty good shape for three bucks. And I was like, dude, God, man, that's good enough for me. Uh, Corey, what, kind of, what kind of stuff did you find? Um, I was looking for anthologies. Got a whole bunch of issues of Negative Burn, which was an anthology from Caliber. I helped him find some of them. <laughs> and John Byrne, huh? Yeah, yeah very Byrne. I got the uh, second of the George... Perez, Wonder Woman omnibuses, so now I have all three. Nice. And, and the last guy we're waiting for, Mr. Birch. He's Representative Butch. What'd you you picked up three trades. What'd you I get? did. I got three trades. I got a, all at good prices. I got a uh, Deadpool trade of some sort. Uh, Deadpool versus the Marvel Universe, maybe. Deadpool's always fun. Uh... The Death of Hawkman, which I did not read when it was out, but has fine-looking art by Aaron Lepresti. Which Death of Hawkman? The Aaron Lepresti-drawn Death of oh, Hawkman, I think. I think he's died more often than I've had a pizza. Well, this is called The Death of Hawkman. Oh, okay. Yeah, and plus today, well, and then there's this one, plus the pizza you'll have tonight, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll even up. Once a year, that's enough. And then I got a Gru collection, Gru Hell on Earth, Dark Horse stuff. Oh, cool. That's a fun story. Which I don't think I got when it was out. So, now I can read it all in one sitting. Whip whip that book around. Yeah. Uh, wife will use it for a coaster. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get into digging, but then I... Uh, it hit me like, ah, that's not so fun. Because he's got a lot of dollar bins, and it's a lot to dig through. And he has no patience either. There was stuff in the dollar bins that came out like a month ago. Yeah. Uh, so I just and I picked up some of that. He doesn't a lot of put her out because he's not a not a DC guy anymore. No. Nope. No. I did pick up a run of Girl Frenzy, but I couldn't get my online app to work to tell me how many issues were there. So I just picked up everything he had. Jordan I think there were like six or seven license. books. I don't know how many in total. It's just one of those crossovers I'm pretty sure I don't have anymore. It's one of those fifth week crossovers DC yeah. used to do. I miss those. Those are fun. So, and now on to the next, the next batch. I should have intentionally looked for some stuff. Yeah, where's the fun in that? Well, like we said, Steve doesn't, Steve's pretty much yep. on sale all the time, so. And there's no order to Yeah, you have to dig. You have to dig. <laughs> there is yeah. no yep. order. But it sells anyway. The prices are I good. Found, like in the dollar bins he had, like one through four out of a six issue run of, I think it was Pennywise. 
Is that a mini series? Oh yeah, How about Alfred. Based on the uh, Alfred E. Newman. Show. And I thought about picking it up, but it, like I said, I'm trying to find the other issues. What me worry? Never. It doesn't work unless you have the gap in your teeth. Well, sometimes I do. If I knock that piece off. Oh, good donuts, but they're no Tim Hortons. <sighs> Why well, I gotta be like that? Hey, I gotta be like that. Is Shannon someone you went out with, or was that yes? Just yes. Someone? Okay. Oh. It was. She was like wearing gothy outfits, and I was like. Yeah, she went to a goth night last night. Yeah. She was texting me the whole time talking about how, you know, what it is they're trying to start a there's a club that's trying to start a scene and there's <laughs> you know, a few goths, a few punks, and a lot of normies. <laughs> or as I call them, Melvins. Melvins. Bunch of Melvins. Her friends that were gonna go with her punk daughter, so she was okay. there alone. Oh. So she texts me and I'm like Aren't you at a club? Well, yeah, the the it, it's kind of dull. Ah, oh. I thought she'd be hit on, man. She, she had like three outfits online. Yeah, which ones do you like? I think you and I were both like, oh, number three, we like those boots. Yeah. But she said they. What did she say? They were uncomfortable. I'd have to go look. It was worth it. I think she went with that outfit, but yes, with smaller boots. So I think number two. No, she was the Canadian girl I used to drive up to see. Ah, that's what I thought. See, I get along with my exes. I get along with the one, although I don't talk with her much. And the other one, I found her on the Facebooks, but I, I was going to send her a Facebook request, but then I asked my wife about it, and she's like, ah, it might be creepy, because we left on bad terms. Oh, then no. Yes. No. Yeah. Although I'm friends with a f mutual friend, so if she's, if she, I, you know, you, you will look at the Facebook thing, it looks like Facebook isn't like a big thing for her, so she's not on a lot, but she would see me commenting on her mutual friend, another woman who, you know, a year older than me and her husband passed away. Speaking of which. I passed this way. Passed this Back in way. the day. It's interesting, last night I'm writing up what happened on Rampage, and then Shannon texts me. So I'm writing about wrestling. She's at a goth club. It's like, yeah, this is us. <laughs> this is who we are as human beings. Uh, and Joel was at a toy, sh toy show. Hell of a great match. Oh, it was a toy show. And FTR, though. Oh, yeah. man. Cool. I am glad that Top Flight is back together, but the older brother, Darius, has been injured twice in the last two years. Once in the rain and once in a car crash. Oh, oh is that what happened? Yeah, he got in a car crash like two to three weeks after he came back from his uh. wrestling injury. <clears throat> well, those are two dangerous activities. Well, in the style those guys use. It is like a car crash. They're going to have to slow down when they get later in the later in their 20s. That's why I enjoy watching them when they're young and they're yep. still rubber balls. Oh. Oh, it's like, it's like Rey Mysterio. You know, he changed his style up when he got older. And he, he still has good matches. You're not going, oh my God, it's Rey Mysterio. But, you know, he's still a good hand in the ring. Well, yeah, you build yourself a reputation and then you can ride that reputation out for the rest of your career. Yeah. Which is good. Good. Yeah, even we watch some of the Attitude Era stuff on the YouTubes, and I, I wince like, oh, this is terrible. I mean, good wrestling, but the moves they did, you're like, ah, and I used to cheer for this. But you feel a little bad. Not really, but, you know, it's just... Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Then you watch stuff earlier than that, it's like a ballet. Yeah. I think they're not doing anything. Yeah, the never old, lay a hand on each other. Stuff. Work the crowd. Five minute wrestling or holding a hold. I once watched a Ring of Honor man. No, yeah, it was Ring of Honor. Cold Cabana versus Truth Martini. Boom, boom. They went 15 minutes, didn't take a single bump. Oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. 
you know, a lot of chops, a lot of biting in the corner, nobody can hold me. As Dave's got the store where you can spend hours there and leave and still know you miss something. He's got stuff on the crown, you know, sets and books and stuff. I, oh, I can see we're coming back. I just looked in a few trade boxes and I would have loved to have uh, looked at the I cheap even, stuff. Yeah, I didn't even start on the trades. I did look at the... At Corey, the where'd you look? I, I went through the trade boxes <coughs> and the omnibus boxes. And I looked at some of the boxes of sets, but his sets... His sets are really good, but they're overpriced compared to the college. Yeah, it's one of the few things. Where yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm... But they're good. Yeah. Occasionally, I did put back... If it's what you're looking for. The, uh, the, what was it? Mistopheles versus the Marvel Universe, and then it was a Fantastic Four versus X-Men. And they were only, you know, I had the whole run for five bucks, which is good. But then it also occurred to me, I might have these in the omnibuses, so... I might not need them. Let's say we went into every store and we only bought stuff that we 100% for sure knew we did not have. <laughs> oh, yeah, that won't happen. For the do like I said, the dollar box, I was like, eh. You know, and then occasionally, like, I didn't pick up any of the Marvel run of Conan. I did love the Savage Avengers. But they had the number 30, no, number 25, which was like the 300th issue of Conan. Savage in, Avengers. In Legacy. And I just... Uh, yeah, you got a variant cover. It's complete. I'll read it. And now Conan's over at Titan. Yeah. First thing Titan's doing is reprinting the omnibuses. Wait a second. Conan's out of Marvel? Yep. Yeah. For Pete's sake. That was what was weird with the second run of Savage Avengers because Conan was in the in the current. So day. will there not be a trade of Savage Avengers then? Now that old uh, licensing. As long as they get it done by the end of the year, they can still yeah. put it out. But I find it really interesting that Titan has announced the first thing they're printing is a reprint of the uh, Conan Marvel run volumes one and two, because those Conan omnibuses, huge sellers. The regular Conan comic did not do well. You mean and back in the day? No, oh, now. Okay, all right. The new Conan, and I think what it is, I don't, I don't think. Anybody other than Jason Aaron can put together a really good Conan story anymore. Well, I because accept that challenge. It's the ground has been trodden so much. There it is. I thought mine side was moving. Was. Next year. Oh, well, okay. actually, he has a designer helping him figure out how he's going to do it, and I thought, whoa, that's posh. Yeah. Hey, dummy, with your foot, I'll take it off. Cool. There we, we go. go. Mind's eye. Mind's eye. And there you go. That was the first part of our Black Friday runaround. It was a really fun day. I know the audio in the first section is not the greatest, but uh, it does clear up. So I hope you enjoy it. It's funny how these episodes, there are some people who say that they don't like these episodes and they skip them. And there are others who say this is their favorite because it's like getting in a car with us and just driving around as we are complete and utter nerds. I also love that whenever Butch is on the show, Butch, Joe and I have a great time, but Butch always adds to it. It's one of those cases where you add one person and the show gets four times better. Next week is previews. The week after that is uh, probably uh, fill-in. And then remember, Festivus is coming. My favorite time of the year is Festivus because that's when we have the airing of the grievances. We will be back. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we will talk to you soon. And now, hit my music.